Hey, I'm Rob Menzies and welcome back to my channel. Today we are here for a helmet unboxing and fitting video. Um, I'm five years on from the last time that I bought a new crash helmet and for health and safety reasons, we're gonna change over that crash helmet as recommended by generally the manufacturers. So we have an unboxing of the new crash helmet. I was really lucky over the festive period, it seems like the price dropped and I was able to get myself an x Light X903 Ultra Car and helmet um, in some great colors which you're gonna see as we unbox it I've also bought myself a blacked out visor which we'll have a look at as well we need to fit on uh, the pin lock system onto the main visor as well so we'll show you doing that and also at the same time I decided now that I'm riding the BMW F900R which has so much stuff on it electronic wise that we really needed to upgrade to the modern era from crash helmet perspective and also get the intercom system so I'll be able to use that for listening to music taking phone calls and more importantly listening to the commands from the satellite navigation so as well as that we have also stretched out and gone for the Encon system um, I've gone for the higher grade model um, so I can try and get the most out of it which is the B902 model so we're also going to unbox that and then we're going to go through fitting that in the helmet and we're going to show you exactly how to do it I have no idea how to do it I've been kind of checking and monitoring through other YouTube videos just to make sure I get this right but I'm going to bring you along for the ride or the fitment or whatever you want to call it and um, you can see as I unbox and put all this together and see what you think so without any further ado let's crack on Okay, wonderful people, welcome to my spare room floor. Um, we're kneeling down and we're gonna go through this unboxing and open this up and show you the helmet first. Um, what we do have for later on in the video is also coming in and doing the unboxing of the Encon system. So we'll show you a little bit more about that later, but let's start off with the crash helmet. Um, now, what I will say is I've bought a couple of extras. Um, I've already opened the box actually, if I'm being completely honest about it. And um, I've also added in the extra visor. So let's show you what I've actually got so this is the box um, so first thing is as I mentioned I would bought myself an extra blacked out visor um, the bit that's really nice with these is the attachment system so I understand it is a metallic attachment system so apparently it should be nice and easy for swapping over the visors so we'll perhaps have a play with that one a little bit later on um, while I was in the shopping mode I also decided that I would get myself a little bit of the um, well, basically you're getting a load of rubbish off your visor so when I'm out riding I can do a quick spray and clean it up which then brings us to the actual helmet itself um, and before I do completely get rid of that box there's a huge great manual I mean how do you need such there's so many pieces in this manual Lord knows why you need that but the other piece that we do absolutely need is, um, oh, and I have my cat coming to join us, hello. Um, the thing that we absolutely do need is we need the pin lock, which will go on the main visor. Um, always guarantee I'm unboxing something, therefore I have a cat climbing into the box, which is wonderful. Right, next thing that I need to do is get this lovely helmet to come out of its cover. As you can see, this is a proper bright, shiny helmet. So. Um, yes, as we have got here, we have the X903 Ultra Carbon, um, which is actually in a large size. Now, the bit that's quite interesting, actually, if you look at the sizes, they actually make the shell for this in three different sizes. So everything below a large is one size, large is another size, and then everything above large is another size. So actually, the large size, which happens to be the right size for me, is actually the perfect one to go for because you have the correct inners to basically match. So there's a few things we have here. We've got this weird system here where you can actually pull on these and it will remove all of the, um, the linings, which is good for emergencies. Um, again, you've got a bit at the back here um, that allows us to do it. There's a particular name for it. Sorry, I can't remember what that's called. Uh, lots of ventilation both front and back the bit that I also like with this helmet as well is once we open this one up um, We also have a system whereby you can basically have a visor that comes down So you've got that as like a sunscreen if you're out on a really sunny day and basically sun is shining in your eyes Then this one helps and you look like a fighter pilot. So that one's quite cool 
So next thing I'm going to do with this helmet then so that we can get this one sorted is get some of this stuff off of here. We just peel off this plastic which I'll do off camera and then the first thing we're going to do is take off the side of these, this visor and we'll have a bash on fitting the pin lock. So let me just get rid of some of this gunk and I'll be back in just a sec. Okay, so stickers are now off the visor. Um, next thing that we need to do is basically take the visor off the helmet. Now this is one of the really good bits with um, the, oh, cat, you disappearing, radio. Um, one of the really good bits with this helmet is how easy it is to be able to take the visor off so that we can actually put the pin lock on. So let's show you how to do that. First of all, open the helmet as wide as it can go turn it to the side and you then have some catches that um, are only visible when you are basically got the helmet at full extension. You basically pin those and it lifts off so you'll notice quick flick and we're done. The really cool bit is, is these are magnetic so when it comes to putting them back on again you can see that's it, it's clipped, it's, it's now in place. So it's really really cool. So actually to take this off I can pull down, flick and that one's out, go to the other side. I don't particularly want to flick this on the floor so I'll be a little bit careful is basically pull that down lift this up and the visor is now removed so we can now put the helmet to one side we'll move the box out of the way in just a second and then we're going to go through and fit the pin lock okay so visor is now off we've got that on the floor it's time to fit the pin lock so um, just something that I do I'm not sure if this is right but I just find this a lot easier first of all when you see the pin lock don't, I don't know if the camera will pick this up I think it will you've got kind of this yellowy finish to it that's not actually the case you'll notice if you actually peel a bit of the edge then it is clear the bit that you're going to do there's a beaded edge that is around the edge here that is the side that actually has to go against um, the visor so we need to make sure when we're putting, putting it in the beaded edge goes against the visor to create a seal the bit that is a real pig with these, and you'll notice I've done it off camera for you, is just peeled just a little bit of the edges of where the pin lock's gonna sit. Um, I've done that on both sides. When you actually start to try and do this, trying to get that little edge, these things are layered over so well and there's no edge for you to pull. Um, just be a little bit patient. I also find if you just grab the edges where the pin locks are, it makes things a little bit easier because once the pin lock is in place, you then need to start peeling it. And if you've got all of the edges already underneath the pin lock, it just makes it a little bit more difficult to try and do. So we're gonna have a bash on doing it. Basically what we need to do here is hook in one side, we need to spread open the visor as much as we can, uh, basically get this to try and seat into place um, and clip in the other side. I'm going to be honest, this isn't the easiest thing to go and do, I've done it successfully several times on several different helmets, I always find it a bit fiddly so you can probably have a bit of a giggle with me as I mark this one up, but let's give it a go. So first thing I'm going to do is try and see if I can get in this side and then we'll bend it open and try and do the other side. So let's have a go at this. So beaded side is against the visor. I'm bending this one up as much as I can. Let's try and get this to clip. Okay, we're in on one side. No, we're not. It's falling off again. See, told you it was fiddly. Oh, and there we go. Now, one other thing that I will say is um, this is quite handy because I'm doing it with obviously a brand new helmet. Um, which is worthwhile trying to do because with brand new helmets obviously we've got a completely clear surface on the visor um, and again same for the pin lock it's not been used so again completely and utterly clear um, let's try and see if I can get you in place come on you horrible little so and so come on off you go clip it there we go we've got a clip but it's not in the right place. Let's try and do that again. You can see the fun that you have doing this. It's not the easiest thing and notice I also have struggled with getting exactly in the right place. There is actually a line here. Oh my God, I'm being stupid. There's a curve, there's a seam. There's a seam that you fit it to. Stop being so stupid, Mr. Menzies. Don't know if you saw, there's a seam all the way along here that you get it to sit into. So let's see if we can widen that visor try and get this pin lock to try and see into place oh and there we go it just clips I was being so stupid there you go you could have giggled along with me as I was doing that one right let's do the really nice bit now where you actually just peel all this off so we got there as you saw a little bit on the fiddly side so basically what we have is there is a seam all the way along the edge here <laughs> is there for a reason it's so that your pin lock can clip into the seam 
that would have been a bit easier wouldn't it <clears throat> anyway there we go <laughs> so the bead is on the inside um, so that's pushing against the visor we've obviously got that now seated in position now why is this important if none of you have i've got to be honest the first time that i actually got a pin lock i didn't realize that it was a pin lock and it was important and i actually threw it in the bin so you might be wondering why am i even bothering putting this on um this is like double glazing for uh, when you're basically using your crash helmet and you're out and about and you're heavy breathing and all the rest of it this stops everything from fogging up so it is really really different you'll be quite surprised actually what a difference it makes just having that extra layer in there it basically works as if it's double glazing so you have one temperature on the outside another temperature you're breathing on the inside and that little barrier that's now in place with that air pocket that is within that seal basically stops your visor from steaming up so you can see where you're going so it's really really great and um yeah don't throw it in the bin <laughs> if you uh if you're not used to doing a pin lock and you suddenly find your helmet with a pin lock in particular this one you absolutely want to make sure that you are using it because um yeah they are amazing couldn't survive without them i clearly do way too much heavy breathing when i'm on my motorbike so let's fit these back on again um so again coming to the side as i said before you can see that's magnetic that just kind of snapped into place i'm going to do the same on this side and again you can see it snaps into place be interested to see how easy this moves then if we just give it a little bit of enthusiasm to get moving and there we go look at that it's automatically slotted back in place again we now have the clear visor with a couple of my fingerprints on it to be fair um, that is now ready to rock so um, that's pretty much it for the main one um, the other piece that we then have is the dark visor so what I will just quickly do is grab the dark visor out and um, that isn't going to have a pin lock I'm going to leave that one just as it is what I will do is just put that onto the helmet so you can have a look and again we'll just quickly go through that process of taking it off and then putting it back on again so give me a sec and that'll be the next bit okay so back again um, we now have the dark visor out um, actually as you look at the visor on this particular model if i'd bothered to take more than three seconds notice that you can actually see it actually has very clearly this inner groove which is exactly where the pin lock sits so um, if you are putting on the pin lock obviously pins on the inside and um, yeah you've got the groove which is basically where the pin lock sits along now um, this is going to be my track day helmet um, you would think where you would want heavy breathing and all this kind of stuff uh, trust me when you're on track you do have a tendency of breathing rather heavily in comparison to when you're dawdling around on the road um, you would think i probably wanted the pin lock on this one generally i find where the pin lock works a lot better is actually bad weather conditions so if you've got cold or rain um, actually when i'm on track and it's a, a normal kind of day the normal crash helmet without the pinlock works fine but um, yeah just to show you swapping this over so again in exactly the same way we're going to do this one so we're going to lift up the helmet we're going to lift up the visor we then go to the side pull the catch lift it out and then we've got to do the same on the other side so pull the catch that then comes out so again we're out and this is the one with our pinlock in move that to one side we're then going to grab the other visor and then we can basically drop that down and into position you can pretty much see that clip straight away i didn't really need to do anything and then give it a gentle bit of movement and then away we go and we now have it with a dark visor on which may i say looks a bit cool i like that how's that liking that a lot but yeah i can only use that on track so if you're not aware I think within most, most countries, but certainly within the UK, this visor is actually illegal to be used on the road for reduced visibility reasons, so you can't do that. Um, if you are interested in trying to see if you can reduce and, and darken things out, what you are allowed to do is with the pin locks that we just went, I had a clean pin lock. Um, you can actually get tinted pin locks, which help you um, if you struggle with uh, basically uh, having a lot of sunlight, sunlight going in your eyes. Uh, as we mentioned earlier on, I'm quite lucky with this helmet. So this particular helmet um, has that internal drop down visor. So again, I can drop that one down if I'm struggling with the sun. Um, so that's really what I tend to use. But if you're using a different helmet, then you might want to consider having a different kind of pin lock, which will potentially help you. So very quick then let's swap it back to the original one so we're swapping both of these out 
that one's then coming out how easy was that this really is so easy with these magnetics so again I can just literally clip it in clip it in it's automatically got itself nice and snug already and then a gentle bit just to make sure it moves and then we're away and we're back onto the main helmet and god I've got fingerprints on the side of this I'll have to clean it up before I go and use it but um, yeah here we go back onto it so next bit that we're going to do now is we'll move the helmet to one side for a minute literally as he's moving it to one side um, what we would start doing now is coming in and looking at the unboxing of the Encom system um, I'm then going to start actually putting it into the helmet and run you through what we're going to do to do that I'll be honest I'm going to be kind of reading instructions and looking at it myself as I go through and do this so you can come along and watch me do it muck it up or get it right um, and let's see where we go Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is just guide you through um, actually just opening the box and, and unboxing this, show you what we've actually got inside, so let's do so. So as we open this up, it welcomes us to the Encom series and I think gives us a nice guide on what we're doing in about 55,000 languages, no doubt. So we have that one. Uh, we also have a power supply, I believe this one is. So if we look at this one, this allows you to actually charge the system, obviously when you're not riding it. Interesting on the power point for this one, as I seem to have something that looks like a uh, adapter that is going in for a shave, or it even looks like a, a Swiss plug, which is quite interesting considering I'm in the UK. So um, luckily I've got adapters for that, but uh, yeah, that's gonna be plugging in for the Encon system. So let's do that one and then let's have a look at what else we've got in the box. So this is obviously the main piece that goes on the side of the helmet. We can also see that this is wired through and this will be one of the main clips. Uh, so this is obviously your main control unit. Uh, what we then also have within here looks lots of other goodies so I'm seeing both of the speakers that are going to go into the helmet looks like we've also got um, something that's going to clip into the back to hold everything in place this is the main power pack and control unit by the looks of things and then this one will clip in I believe to uh, this piece here so uh, that's going to connect everything together what else have we got here? It looks like we've also got the microphone, so this can loop around as well and go into the front so that I can actually um, talk. So that's another piece. What else have we got here? It looks like different microphones, so we've got a choice on which one we want to use. And I'm also seeing a few extras and a few spares as well to help us do all of this and uh, basically open everything up. I think this tool is quite an important one. Um, what else have we got in here? Well, that felt heavy. What's in here? Let's have a look. What is this? Oh, battery. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of important. That's that's the primary battery for it. So, yep, we're absolutely going to need that one as well. Right, okay, so it starts getting a bit scary from here on in. I'm going to be completely honest about it. So this is the first time that I've put an intercom system into a helmet. Um, I'm going to now stop and read through the instructions so that you guys don't have to. Um, what I've also done is watched uh, separate other videos on uh, putting this in as well. What I know that we're now going to need to do is basically start pulling this helmet apart. So we're going to need to take out the sheet pads, which I'll do in a minute, unlock the back, start making room for the speakers to go in the sides and start actually positioning everything around the helmet so it tucks away before we can put it back. So that when we finish up, it basically looks exactly the same helmet. So you can't actually see that there's anything in here, but we need to position it in a way to make sure that actually it's all fitted correctly. So it starts getting a bit scary from here on in, um, which is the reason why I wanted to record this. So anybody else that's having a bash on doing this you've got a little bit of confidence before you start and you know what you're doing um, so uh, I'll go off camera for a minute let me do some instruction reading and I'll be back in just a sec okay so um, I've just gone through to go and read instructions and grab the instruction book and um, what I've realized is I got a special deal on trying to get the Encom system through an online retailer that happened to be based in Spain um, which is not a particular issue other than the fact that all of the instructions for mine happen to be in Spanish um, luckily I found some extra resource and I had a look so I've got a reasonable idea on what we now need to do so we're now going to work through this first bit that we're going to do is the first scary bits which is I need to take out both of the side paneling and remove part of the back panel here so that we can basically get access to all the bits we need to fit so
Okay, so that's both of the cheek pads that are now out. Now need to try and release this piece. Now, is it just as simple as a pull? Um, the thing that I've seen is showing me this is just a pull, but I want to be careful as this is a brand new helmet. Yeah, there we go. It's just a pull, so that's nice and easy. That's freed up that space as well. So next bit that we're now going to do is start working on the side. So you can see that there's a bit coming down here in a circle for where the uh, speakers are going to go. So that's the first thing that we're going to have a bash on trying to fit. There's also this compartment here, which basically virtually everything's going to disappear into. So we're going to start opening this up. What I did get as well is a little tool that seems to be here to try and help us. So that's the next bit that we're going to try and do. In actual fact, let's see if we can do this one live now while I'm talking to you. Okay, so this thing has a bit of a lip that goes around, so you've basically got to use your tool to try and get under and lift it out. Uh, let me do this on the other side so you can see this live now then. So hopefully you can see in. So what I need to do is you need to get the tool underneath the seam here. He says trying to do it. So come on, tool underneath. Try and get the edge. And then when you've got the edge, you can lift it out. He says trying to do it. Okay, here we go, there you go, there's the edge. Okay, so you've got those little lips on the edge, so it clearly is designed so it doesn't fall out very easily, so both of those are taken out. Now I understand that also this foam piece that is in the way as well, we can also move this piece out of the way also. So let's have a bash on doing this. And there we go, just lifts out. So look at that, that's perfectly made. So we've now got the hole and the spacing so that we can basically stick in the speaker. Let's do the same on the other side. One on the speaker. So there we go, we've now got the holes for the speaker. Okay, so the next task in our scary process then is uh, we need to actually get this threaded through the side and um, opened up. So what we need to do as our next piece is actually remove this little uh, plastic bung. So let's have a bash on doing this because this is what the lead is actually going to pass through. So there we go, that just one comes out and we now have the hole that feeds through to the back. Where does it feed through to? It feeds through to this little panel which we now need to open up. And as I mentioned earlier on, this little panel is where everything is going to disappear into. So, next bit that we now need to do then is to basically grab hold of this. Um, we need to make sure that the wire is going all the way through here, so we need that one going through the gap. That one's through. Now what we've got on here is we've got a sticky adhesive back. So you need to make sure that this is really clean. So again, it's great to do this on a brand new helmet that hasn't been used yet. That's kind of handy. Um, and again, we peel this one off. It does recommend that you allow normally 24 hours um, after you've stuck this in place before you actually go and use it. Again, I need to be quite careful here on the positioning because once it's stuck in place you need to make sure that basically it stays there. You also need to be very careful of this lead so positioning now is going to be pretty key as I stick this one on as I mentioned it, this is the scary times uh, but let's get this positioned the way that I want it to make sure that the lead is through and not going to cause any problems make sure that's right on the hole and there we go so positioning actually was quite key then you may have noticed I was just struggling to get the placement just on the back of the unit is uh, where the lead was feeding through um, there was just a, I don't know if you can see that there's just a little plastic piece that wanted to come through on the other side um, and again I want to just make sure that that fitted and placed properly I can now feel that that's completely and utterly flush with the helmet that clearly isn't going anywhere so um, first scary moment over with looks like we've got that one fitted on very very nicely and um, we can then move on to the next section okay so the next step that we now need to do is start putting some of the electronics actually into place so the main bit that we need to do is grab hold of the main part of the electronics so just let's guide you through what we've got obviously you can see two speakers that are going to be going into the slots that we took out 
a short while ago, so we're going to be doing that one. Um, what we can also see is a bit of an antenna coming around the back here. This one is going to be um, basically used and need to be accessible in the future so you can charge everything. The blue one is basically going to be for the microphone that will then route around the front. And there is a red one which is over here. That's going to be the battery where we're going to house the battery over this side. So next thing we now need to do is plug in this cable. Uh, the bit that we need to do is basically take a look at it find the N for the NCOM system. We then want to make sure that the NCOM is facing up on this side as well and then clip these two together. So push that in and that's going to sit in place inside. The other piece that we then need to do is basically make sure that we have there's a little catch, can I show you? Should have tried to show you at the beginning. There's a little catch at the bottom here. What we need to do is make sure that this cable is rooted down and goes through that so it holds in place. So that's again, holding it down, holding it in place. So that it's then all able to come up and slot down inside the helmet. So let's have a bash on doing that just a second. Again, we don't want to kink anything. There's an actual slot for it inside the helmet. So it's just then a case of guiding it down into the right position and slotting it in place. And again, just being careful with it, just being gentle with what you're doing and making sure that it comes down and slides down nicely into place, which is lovely and is what is doing it just there. So we now need to start trying to route some of the other pieces. Next piece I'd suggest that we probably start trying to do, obviously this is gonna go around the back here We'll then have the speaker coming in over here. So we're going to do more of that in a moment. Um, the bit that I want to do here as well is just route this one and have the speaker in place over here. Um, so I want to try and put that one in play first. And then what we also have is something to help it stay in place. So this is an adhesive back. So once we've got it nicely sat in place, then what we can then do is put the adhesive sticker over the top of it and that's going to hold it in in situ and hold it in place. So, Okay, so the next bit that we're doing here is just getting this speaker situated. Now one of the things that I have noticed is you've got um, a wire track that comes down here, no problem at all. Um, actually the daft bit about it is, is it seems a little unseated in the helmet just because of the way, the way that the wire positioning is. I was very tempted for one minute to actually have the speaker facing the other way out because actually the speaker fits perfectly but that's clearly stupid and not what is suggested in the manual either because obviously you're gonna have the sound going into the helmet you won't be able to hear anything um, so if you are fitting this yourself and you do have a similar thing do know that it is the right way around it is a little bit unseated here you've just got to try and position it the best you can and then again we're going to use this so that we can stick it in place so uh, let's just have a quick bash on doing that Okay, so did the actual sticking bit off camera. I will say it was a little bit fiddly, so you've got to peel off the backing stuff um, and then just make sure that you've positioned that well and then obviously just root up this wire that you've got here. So there's a lovely wire track uh, that again leads right into this section so you can tuck all the wires out of the way when we're finished. I think the next bit that I'm gonna do before I start routing around the back is just get the microphone in place. So microphone's gonna be coming up the front here and what we can actually see is it roots along the edge here and then comes down and there's a specific hole here for where the microphone sits. So that's actually gonna be my next task. So let me get the microphone out and we can show you how to do that. Okay, so next bit, we now have the microphone for this helmet. Um, so you do actually get two microphones within this pack. Um, one is specifically designed for this helmet, so basically this one. There's another one that's on a boom, which is for the flip front helmet. Now the bit that I was quite impressed with is actually got some clips here. And as you have a look inside, I don't know if you can see that down inside, there's actually a purpose made clip area. So uh, basically you just come down here, you get it in the right place. He says, push and, oh, that was easy. Is it already in? Yeah, it's already clipped in. There we go, that's already in play. Now, a bit that you then need to do, I uh, don't know if you can see here, let me just try and do it. There's two clips here and there's a run line that comes up here. What we then need to do is just scoosh open a little bit of this. We're gonna clip blue to blue. So you can see the blue to blue that's going in there. 
just feed the cable up the side and then tuck all the wires in on this edge here. So I'm gonna have a quick bash on doing that because I just need to kind of prise things open a little bit. So I'm gonna do that off camera and I'll just show you the last bits as I put it back together again. Okay, I've done a bit off camera here now. So what I've now done is pushed in place the microphone that you saw a moment ago. Um, I've run this wire up here. Now I'm gonna be completely honest, it's fiddly. That probably took me about five minutes to go and do off camera. So, um, Again, don't try and pull this whole panel out too much. Uh, you've basically got three tabs that are along there. Use the tool that comes supplied and just be very careful and, and kind of pry the plastic. What we now need to do is basically tuck this blue wire in under this, underneath this paneling. So that's the next bit that we're gonna do. So first of all, let's connect the two together. Um, from what I can see, looks like it can only go together one way. So if you have a look at this connector, it's a very small connector, but there is just a little notch on the side there. Looks like that notch connects with this notch, which is the main element. You've got basically two arrows that come in together. So I don't know if you can see that on camera. Uh, what we now need to do is lose that wiring in this panel so we're probably going to fold this a little bit um, it does seem that this edge piece will lift up a little bit more so again you can see that's slightly easier to root so what i'm going to do is just kind of tuck all of this in and fold it all away um, it's going to be quite difficult for me to show you that but that's basically where it's all going to go so i'm just going to have a play with that as i can see i've got a little gap here that will allow me to feed that through and get all this connector and the wiring tucked in underneath there. So let me just do that and then I'll come back on it once I've completed it. Okay, so again, done it again a little bit on the fiddly side. So again, use your little poker here. So this does lift out. Um, you, there is actually this kind of top section here is a bit of a gap for the wires to go in. So it looks like it's already been thought about. So again, you've got the wiring coming up here and then along here, you just kind of fold it a little bit and tuck it all in behind. That whole blue adapter has now disappeared and is feeding nicely all the way along. So that's now microphone in place. We've now got the first of the speakers in place. Uh, what we're now gonna do is start coming around the back here and trying to position the, the back section. And then what we'll also do is putting the battery over the other side and uh, then put the other speaker in. So let's do the next bit. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so next piece that I wanna try and show you then. So um, as we said, we've got all of this in place now. Bit that I now wanna do is start routing this piece around the back. So what I've done is I've actually taken, if I kind of move that slightly so you can see, I've moved this whole piece out of the way for a second. What I'm gonna do is basically put this underneath the lining, tuck this down into place, and then this will fold in over the top of it. So let's have a bash on doing that. And again, what I'll do as a kind of a follow on, probably more off camera, is um, just basically try and make sure that uh, I've got all of the, the wires correctly routed. So again, you can kind of tuck them in around the edge here. The bit that's also quite handy that I've picked up through the instructions is this was the charging lead that we were talking about. You'll notice we've got a nice little rubber or elastic thing here so that you can actually hold that in place so it's actually something to hold the charger out of place when you're not using it. So that one's quite cool and we'll do that one a little bit later on. But as you can see, that's kind of now down into place. So what I'll then do is feed this piece down the back of it. He says, trying to do that. So we'll just get that one fed back into place again. And then these bits have their own specific clips that go in the back. So what I'm now gonna do is I'll just get this all fed in so that it's looking decent and, and tidy it up. And I'll show you the after effects afterwards. I'm just gonna wiggle with the wires. And then again, just down the edge here, we'll just have a play and tuck in some of these wires so they're out of the way. So let me have a play with that rather than you sitting and watching. And then I'll show you um, what it looks like once I've done it. Okay, so we're basically there on the tucking in procedure. I will say it's really, really fiddly. Uh, again, another little tip, I ended up taking the visor off just so that I could kind of get to everything, get my hand in through some holes. So what have I done? Um, quite a lot of tucking in, basically. So first of all, the antenna that loops around the back, uh, what you've got is three tabs that sit kind of nicely and sit quite central. You'll notice the wiring, you've got this kind of little box here that fits very nicely over on the side. What I've then got is the main wire and also the antenna wire that I've been able to tuck in. Um, I've been able to close the door and get those tabs in and we can see that, that wire is routing down to the speaker very nicely. And what I've then done is left this power cable out which is um, where we're gonna be able to charge this once we put the battery into place. And then all of that just kind of pushes back in. So what I've done is put the antenna against the polystyrene and then the padding actually kind of loops down the back a little bit and then you just literally push it into place, push it in nice and tight and as you can see it's all now nice and firm and you've got that lined in 
with the last wires over here. So the next bit that we need to do and, and kind of finish this off is two things really. So this one piece here is for the connector for the battery, which we need to sort out. And then obviously we just need to loop in the last speaker and put that in position. The bit that I noticed is there's a little tab here for where the battery goes down. Now, I don't know if you can see that on camera, if I can get there, there's actually a hole down the side of the uh, edge of the helmet in between the lining there where you can basically slot the battery. So what I'm now going to do is just hook up that battery and um, tuck it down the edge here and then uh, basically we'll just make sure all the wires are tucked in and I'll guide you through how I got on. Okay, just wanted to quickly show you this. So first of all, I've connected the battery that has come over. Uh, again, there's only one way in which it can connect, so you've got two arrows coming together. As I mentioned, um, I've pulled out the side here, and again, the battery slots in. Now, it is important it goes horizontal, not vertical, so it doesn't fit properly. So just make sure you've got that. Um, again, I'm just going to tuck in these wires here now off camera just to make it look pretty. So just wanted to show you that. Okay, so let's just show you that again. So as I mentioned, the battery is now slid down that way, so not vertically, horizontally, so that's slid down. We've then been able to push this back in. What I've then excuse me done with the battery lining is we've got the main wire coming over the connector is now over here so you can see that against the box um, again there's a bit of room over here so we can kind of tuck it out the way and everything lays flat what I've then done is routed across here just lifted this area slightly so that we can make sure that we've got the wire coming down into the channel so we've now got the speaker over on the side here what I'm now going to do is just go and get the um, the foam cover again so we've got this foam cover uh, I'll just get that put in the position so that we can stick that in place so it's all sorted but just wanted to show you a little bit more about that routing one of the one, one of the things I will say from doing all of this so far is all of it requires a lot of patience all of it is quite fiddly it does fit it does have its own place but just making sure those wires tuck away and you get you know a clean surface on what is a brand new helmet um, does just take a little bit of effort so make sure you're doing it on a day that you've got a bit of time and you can basically be patient with it else you might get a little bit fed up uh, but let's get this last little bit in place and get that stuck in and then we can start putting all the padding back in and we've pretty much finished okay so now done so again you can see all now rooted in we've now got the nice little sticky thing over the top that is just holding it in place so it's not going anywhere so that's now done on both sides all the wires now rooted in we now have the microphone rooted in as well so all in play last bit that I now need to do then is basically just put all of the padding back in put everything back to normal and we then have a functioning helmet that needs nothing more than giving obviously this Encon system a charge up and then a connection to the motorbike okay so next bit that I just want to talk you through and I know it's quite a basic thing it's nothing to do with the actual fitment of the uh, of the the system and the the Encon system but it's just putting the padding back in again um, so <laughs> again with everything that I've kind of been doing here it all feels like the Krypton factor to make sure that you're doing it properly so basically what you have when you're fitting it is you've got two well you've got three slots so you've got the back joining popper you've got this one and you've got this one so the back joining popper on the right hand side is going to slot in on that one what you then have is these two holes now the bit that's interesting is the system that you've got for opening and closing so that's where this pull cord is coming into place to open it to allow this to release right so this one is sitting in this slot which basically once the bottom slot is released can just lift out this one down here is where you've got to line up now if you look at this it's only open on one side so what you've got to do is slot the top one into place slot the bottom one into place while this is open and reach your hand in and then push that closed once the padding is actually in place here so that you get it locked in and that way the system's ready to use and obviously if you pull the cord then then basically that's going to open it to allow the padding to be removed so just a little bit of a guide on putting it back in again basically do the the back slot first that pop up and go in first and then you've got to maneuver the front to have that a uh, bit of plastic open and then once you've got it in play then close it and then you can just kind of lock the padding back into place again okay so both the pads are back into play again you'll notice when this one comes back again I've just been kind of moving this a little bit more so that I can make sure that it's a bit more tucked out of the way on this elastic strap that then works with the padding so we've got that accessible and is there available for us again if you can kind of look in here you can see the microphone down here 
on the side and you'll also notice this the quick release is now right by it so uh, again right by that quick release it's quite interesting actually because microphone being on the side rather than completely forward I should imagine you should get a really really good signal and be able to speak quite clearly into this so this should be interesting to give it a try but now that's everything back in play again again as you look at it um, from the outside all you're gonna see is this uh, but actually everything now completely tucked away and uh, and sorted um, and basically all now nice and positioned so next thing for me to do is basically give that a charge um, and then we're ready to give it a go so there we go all done eventually after much fiddling and faffing about <laughs> we're at a stage where everything is all sorted so helmet is unboxed we've got the new visor sorted we've got the encon system all installed as you would have seen as you've gone through this my hot tip for you is take your time and for the love of God have a bit of patience uh, making sure that you've just literally got every little bit you've got to make sure that you're really running those wires through all the little nooks and crannies um, it is clear that there is space within the helmet for this system but it is very much a tight fit and you've got to make sure that you've got a bit of patience just to make sure that all of those wires just run in the right direction and they're quite small wires as well so you could very easily be at a stage where you're slicing through something as I speak I have have got the helmet on the floor that is now on charge um, so getting to a stage where it's got that technical that I'm charging my crash helmet um, and then in a future video what we'll be looking at doing is obviously talking to you about pairing it up to phones and pairing it up to the motorbike and what kind of things that we can actually do with it now that we've actually got everything set up um, obviously hope you found this one really really helpful I'd be interested if you have the same or similar crash helmets how you've got on with unboxing and setting all of this lot up if you found it easier than me or if there were some hot tips i'd welcome those down in the comments so thanks a lot for your time and no doubt see you again soon i hope you enjoyed this video if you did then please remember to not only like the video but also hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on future videos like this in the future thanks again for watching and see you again soon